What did I say? Luke? Oh, I didn't read Luke, did I? Remind me of Ezra 9. Luke. Luke 6. Luke 6. People say, but God wants to all have plenty and have everything we want. Here's what God has to say. I don't, I don't know what these guys do with these verses. They twist them all to pieces. Over in Luke 6. <clears throat> Verse 24. Woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your Consolation. The word consolation, paraclesis, is comfort. You've got your comfort. You're going to go to hell after this. When somebody mentions somebody having great big huge houses and 15,000 square feet or, or costing six, eight, ten million dollars, Paula White bought some house down in Florida that, and that woman is a total idiot. Big, super charismatic wacko. She bought a house that cost about $8 million down there. And I don't know what they're doing with that church because her and her husband divorced and she got caught running off to Rome with Benny Hinn. It was just recently. I just want to say, Paula, you could have done better than that. Lordy mercy. What a guy to run away with. Now, she's her, she's her own, she's got her own kingdom down there. She don't need Benny. Of course, he's probably got more than she's got. That's, she's playing up to him. All right. One of you that are rich, one of you that are full, you, you're, you shall hunger. One of you that laugh now, for you will weep, mourn, and weep. Boy, I like those verses there. Now, look back over here in... Mark, the 10th chapter. Mark, the 10th chapter. Rich young ruler comes to Jesus, said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have, have eternal life? And Jesus gives him five of the second. The, command, the Ten Commandments are divided into two parts. The first four are about loving God. The second six are about loving your neighbor. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy neighbors thyself. And if you fulfill the second six, you're fulfilling the first four. All the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus gives the rich young ruler five of the second six, and the one he leaves out is thou shalt not covet. The man had a problem with money. So Jesus says to him here in Mark, the 10th chapter, rich young ruler, in verse 23, And Jesus looked around about him and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. Why is that? Because you can't... How in the world is Bill Gates going to repent and turn away from $50 billion? I'm sure he's got somewhere in that neighborhood. Last count I had was $48 billion, but I'm several years behind. I can't imagine $48 billion. Somebody makes a million dollars is considered wealthy. He's made a million dollars 48,000 times. Can you picture that? A million dollars 48,000 times. And I said to somebody the other night, I wouldn't trade. The knowledge I have about the scriptures in my body for his body, for his money, in my mind for his mind. I wouldn't trade places with that man because he gets to keep that money for about another 30 years. What if God said, okay, I'm going to give you all the money in the world for 30 years and then you have to die and go to hell. Okay, is that a deal? Would you, would you say okay? Well, he has to die and go to hell. Mary will say, look at that. Isn't that, boy, isn't that beautiful? Look at that house. Look at this. I say, yeah, but he has to die and go to hell one day. He'll be watching some TV thing and Alan Jackson had his house on the market for $36 million. Huh? What? what? What arrogance? What opulent arrogance? I'm thinking, 
Alan, if you don't repent, you'll die in your sin and you will go to hell one day. But he's a good old boy, isn't he? You actually believe that? If he was a good old boy, he wouldn't shower himself with that. He'd reach out and help the poor with some of that and live in, live in a modest million-dollar house. $36 million. Good grief. That is outrageous. We had it on the mark for that. And then he goes on to say, And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? One of the things that <coughs> the charismatics will say, Well, we're not trusting in riches. We, we don't really trust in them. It just takes that to get the word out. You, you mean it takes you living in a ten, fifteen million dollar house to get the gospel out to uh, Africa where they live in huts and sleep on a dirt floor? Is that what it takes? First of all, you're not preaching the gospel. You don't know anything about death, the self, and the daily cross. So they're not, when they say, we're getting the gospel worldwide. No, you're not. You're not getting anything worldwide. I said it over at the house the other night. If God would just kill everybody that was not elect and that was vessels of wrath and burn their houses down in an instant, when we walk out that door, I wonder how far we'd have to walk before we could get, find a believer. It would look like a barren moonscape, wouldn't it? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye. <laughs> I can't even read this without laughing. It is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. I heard Fred Price say this with my ears on the TV. He read that and he's being serious. Well, they had bigger needles back then. Uh, and they had big, they had eyes of needles. They had giants that lived in those days. You mean for a guy nine foot six, it takes a needle about with an eye this big with a the needle about 100 yards long. Now, who's going to pick that up and sew giant clothes with it? It takes the same size of needle to sew clothes for a man 9 foot 6 as it does a man 4 foot 6. He actually said that. And he was sit looking at the camera trying to convince people they had large needles in that day and time. What A camel is what? About this high? From where I am? And about that wide? You're talking about a needle with an eye like this. <laughs> the guy has to, he's got to have rocks in his head, doesn't he? Now, the Bible has much to say about the rich. This is the doctrine of demons. And the doctrine of demons belongs in this demon series. Kenneth Copeland, Fred Price, T.D. Jakes, Rod Parsley, uh, can't even, John Avanzini, uh, they all preach this doctrine of devils. That's what they preach. And in this same chapter over here in, Mar in Mark 10, in Mark 10, where that Peter says, We've left all and followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or mother, father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive. Now, this is what John Avanzini calls the hundredfold blessing. He goes to Paul Crouch's Begathons, gets on there. He's a guy with pitch black hair, and he's got ruts in his face. Look like he's 90 years old. He's from Fort Worth, Texas. And the man gets up there and says, See, you're going to get the hundredfold blessing if you leave all and give it all to God. You're going to hundredfold, now and this time, houses. And he stops right there. You've got a hundredfold houses, therefore you're going to get a hundred houses. But it also says, and brethren. If the houses are literal, so are the brethren. You're going to get a hundred brothers and sisters, if then the sisters are literal, and mothers. If the houses are literal, so are the mothers. But who is my mother and my sister and my brother? Those who do the will of the Father. So if that is spiritual, then the houses are spiritual and my house is your house if you need a place to stay. I've had people say, can I sleep on the floor downstairs? I say, yeah. Bring, you got an air mattress? If you don't, we got one. 
this is what this is talking about. I'm not going to let anybody be out in the cold and sleep out in the cold. You can, I don't have, I got my bedrooms full upstairs and you can sleep on the floor downstairs. Or if I had a bedroom, you could sleep in it. Huh? And Willie does that. Yeah, yeah, Willie's done that. I've had a bunch of people come in when I've had a bedroom available. And Willie takes people into his house and we take people in. That's what it's talking about. We're not going to let you live in the rain and in the cold and in the snow and in the heat. That's what that's talking about. But it goes on to say, and children and lands with persecutions. I have never heard John F. Benzini get down to persecutions there. With persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. They, he takes this. They all got favorite verses. This is one of his and he goes, twist. He's the guy that had the church that the guy told me about. He went into his church and he saw a picture of Jesus in the front of his church in Fort Worth sitting on a rock and he had two bags of gold, one in each hand. Jesus sitting there with a bag of gold in each hand. It said gold on it or something like that. These preachers are preaching the doctrine of the devil. That's what they're preaching. Look over here in Ezra. Here's why a lot of the Christians get involved, and this is why Israel got involved in Ezra 9. Ezra the ninth chapter. This is why you have to separate from these pagans and heathens. Now, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job. All right. Psalms, Proverbs, if I can find. Ezra. The ninth chapter. Now, in the ninth chapter of Ezra, in the ninth chapter, here's why believers, this is why Israel did it. Israel was believers at this point. They've been scattered over into Babylon. It's amazing what these guys can do with Bible verses. Now, this verse tells you why a believer will be involved in this doctrine of the devil. This will tell you this. Israel was carried off into Babylon, and now while they were in Babylon, the Persian, the Persian kings, monarchs, gave four decrees. Three, the first three decrees, one, two, three, the first one was given by Cyrus, Cyrus in 538 B.C., to go back and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem temple and the second decree that's in the first chapter of Ezra the first chapter Ezra 1 and it's also in 2nd Chronicles the 36th chapter and Ezra comes right after Chronicles so therefore it's only natural to be at Ezra the first chapter and then the second decree was given by Darius he was a Mede king of the Mede Persian Empire Darius, and he gave this decree in 520, and this 520 B.C., and this is in Ezra the 6th chapter. Ezra the 6th chapter. And the third decree was given by Artaxerxes. And they're coming back from Babylon over here to Israel, over to Israel, to do the things that these Persian kings when the Bible says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, in the fourth chapter of Zechariah, Zechariah was prophesying in 520. It will not be by might, by mighty army, that Israel will be released from Babylon. It will be by the Spirit of God, when God sends His Spirit to the mind of Cyrus, to the mind of Darius, to the mind of Darius, to the mind of Artaxerxes, to deliver Israel back over here, it won't be a by mighty army they'll be delivered. It'll be by the Spirit of God going to these Persian and Mede kings. And when this third decree was given, it was given to Ezra. And it's in the seventh chapter of Ezra. And Ezra comes back over to Israel. When he gets there, he finds that these decrees have been given before him and Israel has come back over here and they started intermarrying the heathens. 
They start 